Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ofro and today's video will be on Streamlit AG Grid usage. If you have been in my channel, probably you know I'm a huge fan of Streamlit and I have made a couple of videos on Streamlit tips, Streamlit tricks. Please watch it and one of the most common uh, views or the common reviews I find in my channel is about interactive Streamlit tables or Streamlit data frames. And because of that, today I thought of making a very simple video Streamlit interactive table. So we will use AG Grid. It's one of the best JavaScript grid in the world where you can have different multiple checkbox options. You can import an image within your rows or your, within your data frames. And also you can interact with your table. So basically if you select, uh, you can obtain the output actually. So we'll try to implement this JavaScript grid within our Streamlit app. And how we can do that? Thanks to this amazing component of the creators in Streamlit. Uh, Pablo and he built a Streamlit AG Grid component. So we just need to install it and then we'll write a few lines of code and we'll build a very demo Streamlit app and let's see how it works. So, so let me first show you the, uh, the modules which we need. So we need to import Streamlit. So we import Streamlit as ST and uh, we also need to import pandas because we will be using pandas to make uh, the, the load the data frame or just create a pandas data frame so for that we will import uh, pandas as pd these are the two uh, modules which you need in the beginning and i will show you the data set how it looks like so this data set was mainly uh, downloaded from kegel data set so i don't have the link yet but i will actually put this in the in my github account so you can actually find the data sets from there we are COVID variant data sets. Uh, it's almost, I think, 50,000 of rows. I'm not sure about it, but yeah, we will load enter uh, data set. So let me write a function which will help us to load the data set. So we will write as, that's all we need to just to load the data for time being. And then we will start with a very easy streamlit syntax. So it's streamlit dot uh, right or we can just load it as streamly dot data frame and we will load a data frame so let me first call this function data upload and uh, let's do another thing so we will use this streamly dot catch function and in this way we don't reload the uh, this data upload function each and every time so basically once we have uploaded the data it's there in the memory so let's see how it looks like and in order to see this we need to fire our terminal with streamlit so let me first show you my streamlit version uh, streamlit version right now which i'm using is probably 1.5 if i'm not wrong but let's check it yeah streamlit 1.4 so probably i need to upgrade it further uh, anyways let me run the Streamlit run and let's run test.py since our this uh, Python script file name is test.py and we fire our terminal. So it will open in our local host. So we still didn't assign our data. So basically uh, we say data is our DF. So this is our data. And now we save it and we go to the local host and we rerun it. Probably now we see all our data sets out here. Okay, uh, let me just also show the info as the length of the data frame. So let me dump that output also. So it's basically length of the data frame. That's it. So it's almost 10,000 of the rows which we see out here. That's perfect. So this is how a streamlit, uh, you know, a default streamlit data frame looks like. So here we cannot interact with our data sets. We cannot interact with each and every rows out here. We see all the columns which we saw in our raw data we see each and every columns but you don't have a pagination format or neither we can edit this rows so this is where the power of streamlit uh, ag grid comes and probably if you see the AG, ag grid javascript you know that's uh, that website which i showed you beforehand uh, there you can find how interactive the ag grid is basically you can also add checkbox in, in the ag grid so these are the features which we can now add to our Streamlit uh, data frame. So let's try to implement those. 
So how we can do that? We need to import the model which I showed you before. Let's import and then we try to make a streamlit AG grid table out here. Uh, so now let's import from, let me just, yes, from uh, ST AG grid. Uh, import AG grid. So I'll just show you how AG grid tables look like and then we will further modify our AG grid table. So now let me uh, put this exact data frame into AG grid. So for that all we need to do is we've already imported AG, the AG grid module and we need to put AG grid and we just assign the data frame there. And now if we go back to our uh, uh, our local host we see this is so now if you look into the ag grid table so this was the typical stream the data frame so i'll just write it here st dot uh, let's say info or success and here we put uh, why don't i just put a header this is something similar header is better uh, this is uh, ag grid i don't know if i'm right ag grid table I don't know if we can just put this below or it's okay this way and this was the the data frame this is streamlit default data frame so now if we see this is the streamlit default data frame and here below we'll see the AG grid table so if you see the AG grid table it has a different uh, user interface and we can actually change all this stuff and probably we can do a lot of stuff out here we can actually contain maybe let's say what variant we have apart from angola i don't know or maybe just we just go out here we just uh, say only the delta and if i just search for it you see we just only see the delta now so this is interactive in this way and i think for number of sequence i see two zero dollar variations let me search if there is something one or something yeah maybe one and then all the one comes out here so this is already an interactive table but now we will implement more features in this AG grid table for example we can change its color and all these things this is a default AG grid theme you can change that also but i would like to implement right now if we can edit this particular rows and we can also try to we'll try also to uh, delete the uh, rows so these are the few things which we will tweak in today's tutorial and let's see how we do. So let's add few more features to our Streamlit table. So what we do is we import uh, another module from Streamlit AG Grid. So we write Streamlit uh, AG Grid, uh, import grid options builder, yeah this one. Or maybe what we can do is grid option builder, import, uh, yeah, this is perfect. Uh, and now all we need to do is we will up update our AG grid grid option builder so what we do is we say gb let's say assign a variable grid option builder and we say from uh, from data frame it just came up yeah from data frame and we put our data frame that's it and after that we can actually further add more stuff to this So our main idea is to make our columns editable. Uh, we can actually add group also, you know, but today I won't implement anything. So you can add groups to it. So we can just add groups or yeah, that's enough. And if we have all this thing, uh, we can also start adding maybe a checkbox. radio and here we give two options so here we give a level first so it's a typical streamlit uh, uh, syntax so we give a selection uh, type this is our label for the widget and then we give an option uh, so we give it like this so it can be single or we can actually select multiple ones so let's put it like this and now the selection mode we give it this way so whatever the user selects from here it gets updated so in that way it's you know it's much more interactive we don't need to be dependent on our hard uh, code we just take the user's choice and we put it there so now let's save it and let's see how it looks like right now so we go here 
Ooh, yes. We can actually come in this part where we see the data frame into this. So we just load our data and we put it here. I don't know if it's working or not, but uh, okay. I think we need to add few more stuff here. So let's say we do it in this way. It's a GD and then we get the build. Yeah, right. GD build and here and then we give this grid option. We create an object here and then we just pass it here. Option. And now if I save it and I see in my local host. Okay, perfect. So our streamlit grid now has a checkbox. Okay, we can select each of this thing. If we want multiple, we just go to the selection type multiple and we uh, again go now we can select multiple ones. But we also need to actually get the output of it, right? Then it looks proper. Anyways, we'll come to that later. But now we have something more. So let's say alpha plus we put something like that. Oh, sorry, alpha please. So it actually we can now edit our rows. So let me try to implement whatever we select or whatever data we uh, select using the checkbox. We see it as output. How we can do that? Uh, let me do like this grid uh, table and we assign a variable here probably this is one way there can be multiple way we can do this and what we do is we select this cell row and we do grid table from here we take the selected rows okay? and then we st dot write we do the cell row. Yeah, let's see if this works or not. Yes, look, so whatever we select, let me just you know, remove this thing, remove the selection, we'll go to a select, single selection type. And now we select, uh, let's say, select this one first. And here uh, we are expecting expecting something but we don't see i think we need to add one more thing out here so we need to actually have an update mode like whenever there's a selection change for that we need an update mode yeah that's one critical thing so for that all we need to do is say grid update mode so you see this is something which was missing in our case and let me add few more options in this case so what we need to do is we say update mode and here we write grid update mode the module which we just imported and then we say selection uh, change I don't know is it selection something like this probably to work let's see and maybe we can do more stuff so what if we mm, what if we add uh, maybe we we give uh, our height so this all can be fixed actually it's around 500 we can actually add uh, let me put this thing already true so you know in we will use few js code we'll inject js code so let me put it true not maybe not here but in future we'll do that that's something oh and i was speaking about the theme so Okay, we use this theme now. Default is streamlit, but we use something called fresh. Yeah, that's just a theme which I saw. Uh, it's available. I think fresh or dark or something like that. So let's see if it works or not. Let me see if we miss something or not. Uh, we can fit the columns also. Let's see how it looks like. So the columns are not fit right now. Oh, there is no theme called fresh. It's like fresh with small f. Bad mistake. Uh, yeah. Oh yes, look, it looks very different now. I think the we are. It's very different now. And we can actually select like this. Oh yeah, you see the color change. And now when we do the selection, since we do the we do the grid update selection mode, now we already see the output out here. Let's do the multiple type. Okay. It's, it's pretty crazy you know to use uh, this ag grid within streamlet i never thought of it is also possible and it's really amazing you know how 
interactive the AG grid table is and within Streamlit it makes it an added bonus for us. So whatever we select we will can see the update around so update we can see the update in our output. So I can actually write something like you know st dot maybe subheader and we just say output you see all the output beneath it. So that's all in the part where we mainly do the display thing. We will also add more feature to it. Basically, we can just start deleting or maybe highlighting our stream with AG grid table. So these are the few things we will try to implement in our stream with table further. So for that, I will actually change to few radio buttons. So, you know, our app will have options such as what the user wants to do. Does the user want, just wants to get a display of it? So how we do that? We use again something called streamlit uh, radio buttons but before that yeah we just add a sidebar and then we here we add radio and here we say you know type or maybe the label can be like this functions you know what kind of functions we want maybe i'm i don't know exactly what we can just write it this way what i want to implement is something like this once the user wants to display something the person selects the display option and if the user wants something to highlight the user goes for the highlight option so i think this comes under options so yeah something like this so we can actually put this code maybe this part of the code under the option display so let's add that feature now itself so if uh, we need to assign that so maybe like something like from and uh, whatever the variable comes so it's like if from is uh, maybe a display the user get this option out here see that's this was my idea actually so now if we look out here so user has this option of displaying and then under display this option come but if i go to highlight since we didn't implement any feature yet we don't see that uh, highlight option yet but we will try to add few more codes well yeah so this was the first part of the video where we try to implement edge grid table within our streamlit app in the coming section which will be much more fun because we will try to implement the highlight uh, feature in our streamlit edge grid table and also we'll try to delete row wise in our streamlit edge grid table Meanwhile, if you guys have any other suggestion or any other feature which you guys want in the edge grid table, please don't forget to mention them in the comment section below. I would also love to cover this part in the coming video. And please do like my video, share my video and also subscribe to my channel and have fun while coding. See you in the next video. Thank you.